Hi, welcome to Photoshop Basic Training brought to you by 7tutors.com. In this lesson, we'll be looking at how to start a new project by creating new layers in Photoshop and importing images into our Photoshop work area. All right, before we begin, I'd like us to take note that most times we um, work on already existing images in Photoshop just to edit them and add new features to them, change their looks and their feel. All right, so let's get started. All right, so let's begin by creating a new document. Um, before we begin, I would like to say, if you haven't looked at the introductory lesson, please do go back. Even if you are a Photoshop expert, I believe you can just go back to refresh your memory about the toolbar, the palette, and the palette well, and you know, other things. All right, so to create a new document, we come up here to our menu bar and click on File. And then we choose from the option new. Now the shortcut for this is Control N. So if you're on the Windows, you can hold down the Control key and press down the N key. But if you're on a Mac, you can press down the Command key and the N key. You still get the same result. So we'll just click this here. Now a new window has popped up. From here we can give our document a name choose from the precepts what we want our document to be like and adjust some other options here. So for the name we'll just call our document um, new work. Okay. So from here our documents will be called new work. And from the preset you can choose whatever mode you want to work in. Now if you are making an image for a website this will be the option to choose. Or if you're making um, an image for a mobile device or for a video, you can choose either of these. But we'll just leave this at clipboard since we're just working. And then you can adjust the size of your document from here. You can adjust the width and you can adjust the height. I guess we'll just change this a bit. That's a little bit too small. Let's make this um, 60. Okay, 602. And you can change the resolution of the document. Directly below the resolution is the color mode. Now, the color mode is quite important because it depends on what you're working on. That is the color mode you choose. Now, if you're working for, if you're working on an image for a website or a web image, I recommend you use the RGB. Now, the RGB is used to work on images for website. It gives you a better quality in your image. And R stands for red, and the G stands for green. And the B stands for blue. Or if you're just working on a commercial um, printing, you can just make use of the CMYK. And that stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. <laughs> okay, I know that's K, but trust me, it's black. All right, so we'll just leave this at grayscale. Oh, and the grayscale is if you want your image to be in black or white. Now, if you want your image to be um, transparent or black background or a white background, this is the one to choose from. So if you leave it at white, once we click the OK button, our document will be white. If we choose black, the background will be black. If we choose transparent, we'll just have a grid-like background. We have some more advanced um, options to choose from here. And if we scroll down, okay, it's already scrolled down. You can see we have the color profile and we have the pixel ax um, aspect ratio. Now this enables us to work on the quality of our document if we're going to be working for um, videos. If you have an image that you want to use for um, an ad or something, this is the option to work with. But I believe since we're not going to work with that, we just close that up. Save. Now, once your settings are already made, you can choose to save your preset. Now, once you save a preset, you can come back to it and select it from the preset down here. So, we'll choose save. Let's call this first work. Now, once you save, as you can see, nothing seems to have happened. But, if we come down and we click this button, uh, there we go, we have it here. So even if you choose any other option, 
and the settings seem to change you can just scroll down click and everything reverts back to the settings that you already pre-saved um, pre and down here we have the image size so our image size is just 508.5k all right so you can also delete a preset so if we click this button it gives us the warning or it prompts us do you want to delete the first work so we'll say yes all right so let's click OK as you can see this is our image active area well in our previous tutorial we couldn't show you anything because we're not going to work on a document but since we're working on a document here here we are now as you can see our background is white because we chose a white background from our settings if it chose black it would have been black and if it chose um, transparent would have had a grid like background right here at the top we can see that the name of our document is new work and that was what we called our document and we chose the grayscale color and it gives us another option like the resolution and so on so that is how you create a new document in Photoshop quite easy oh yes and in our palette here in our layer palette as you can see once a new document has been created it reflects here in our palette so later on in the tutorial we'll be looking at how to make use of the layer palette to create some outstanding effects in Photoshop okay all right so now we're going to be importing images into our Photoshop work area just to play play around um, you can also have more than one tab here you can have more than one work area so if we come up here you click new you can just call this um, new work two um, close this let's make this let's choose web from the preset we choose the web preset then we'll click OK and as you can see we have new work two and we have two documents here all right now there are various ways of importing a document into your Photoshop work area most times when we import a um, an image into our document area it appears as a new layer until we choose to import it into our work area now we can come up here to the file and then we can browse in bridge and with the Photoshop CS5 we have a new feature called browse in mini bridge or you can just come here to the shortcut and click this button now when you click this button it brings up the Adobe bridge so we'll just wait for that to load okay here it is now the Adobe bridge is very very beautiful trust me it enables you to look at images you know it gives you all the content from here you can choose the, um, the directory documents you can go to documents and then all your pictures and then the content changes then you can scroll down and you know choose whatever image you want to work on and then when you select a content you have a preview here and, you, and the windows can be adjusted so we can move this to the left scroll this down make this larger so I can have a clearer picture Ooh. all right so we'll just scroll this down I'll scroll that up and make it <laughs> make the image smaller all right so for our test we'll just be coming here we'll come into photo works these are a few projects I've been working on so don't mind me okay now you can get your image from any source you can get them from um, a CD a DVD or a hard um, sorry an external hard drive or you can download them from the web or copy them from any other source but I would like to give this warning if you're going to um, be downloading an image from the web you have to take note of the copyright laws whenever you're downloading or copying images um, it's illegal to use images that don't belong to you unless you have specific permission 
So if it doesn't belong to you, don't touch it. All right. So from our Adobe Bridge, we can select, have a preview of the image we want to import. Now it works like every other um, window. You can hold down the control key and select multiple images. And as you select more, as you can see, they appear here in the preview, but we don't want that much. So just click this or you can click this, hold down the shift key and click here. Now it selects everything in between to this point. All right. Now we have 15 items selected and you can still hold down the control key and deselect. So we don't want you. No, we don't want you. We do not want you. Definitely not you. All right. So in this um, lesson, we'll just be uh, walking through the basic here. We we'll just go. Uh, let's see what we're going to choose. All right. So let's have this. Now, once you've selected the um, image you want to work on, you just double click. And it reappears in the active image area of Photoshop. Like I said before, any um, image that has been imported into Photoshop appears as a new document. So as you can see, we have this here. Have you had a feel of God's word today? <sighs> that is a question we should all answer. <laughs> okay. Or you can import a document by the mini bridge. Now the mini bridge is a new feature included into a, um, Photoshop CS5. So it enables you to select a document from within your Photoshop interface. Unlike the bridge that takes you to a different um, interface, the Photoshop interface allows you to just, sorry, the mini bridge allows you to just browse um, from within your Photoshop interface. All right, so I guess that's out of the way. So we can just close this and close this. All right. So I believe we have a hang of, I'm sorry, we've gotten a hang of how to import an image into our Photoshop work area. Join us next time. This has been Photoshop Basic Training brought to you by 7tutors.com.